have come. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done. Thank you, Lord. Paid the price of Calvary. You shed your blood. You set me free. Thank you, Lord. The greater love was ever shown. No better life ever was laid down. And I will always love your name. And I will always sing your praise. And I will always love your You took my sin, you took my shame, you drank my cup, you bore my pain. Thank you, Lord. You broke the curse, you broke the chain. In victory, from death you rose again. Thank you, Lord. Not by word, but by your grace. Hold me now in your righteousness And I will always love your name And I will always sing your praise And I will always love your name And I will always sing your Give me peace, you restore my soul. Thank you, Lord. You fill me up, and when I'm full, you give me more until I overcome. Thank you, Lord, for making me to be like you and do the works of the Father too. I think that was one of those songs that you don't know how to end. <laughs> 
We could just keep going on that for the next hour, couldn't we? <laughs> anyway, welcome everybody to City Life Church this morning. It's so good to uh, see you, welcome you, uh, folks who are here normally every week, and then we've got folks joining us on holiday. Welcome, and folks coming back. So great to see you all. Um, just a few notices before we get cracking. Um, tomorrow evening, we've got prayer for children and youth here at seven o'clock. So be up in the house of prayer. If you want to come together, if you're interested in praying for our children, and young, I think we're seeing these prayers answered. You know, we are seeing these prayers answered. So uh, if you want to join, don't have to be involved with the children or young people's ministry, but do if you want to come along and just intercede and pray for our children and young people. Then we've got a little video, Run VT. I always want to say that. <laughs> Back in March, as the leaders team, we went away to a conference called Peace in the Kingdom. And in one of the worship sessions there, the event when the lady touched Jesus' cloak came into my mind. And it stayed with me for quite a long time. And my thoughts kept going. And I was thinking, as a woman in City Lives Church, what opportunity do I have to meet with other women, to talk about women's things and pray and minister with each other? And I shared this story when we got back with Hannah, and then this email popped into Hannah's email box and uh, about an event. And we're just going to show you a short clip now about something called Deeply Rooted and something that we want to run at City Life Church, which we're going to invite you all to. Hello there, my name is Kathy Madhavan and I'm super excited to let you know that we have just been filming all day. Sharina Belusi, Lou Fellingham and myself, a new event for Care for the Family called Deep Rooted. We've had a fantastic time. Tell us all about it, Sharina. We have spent the day talking about being deep rooted women with deep rooted faith and the importance of having a deep rooted community. And then we've just wrapped up talking about how we have deep rooted hope and alongside that we've had some great worship as well with Lou and Nathan ah oh, thank you I know that if you join us it's going to do you good whatever season of life you're in whether you feel like you're on the mountaintop or down in the valley join us on Deep Rooted I know you will be blessed so on um, Tuesday the 12th of July from 7 o'clock we want to invite all women to come along and join us for the Deeply Rooted Women's event um, we're going to have some cheese and wine and chocolates and other drinks and all lots of things that women like to eat and drink um, and we're going to have some time to uh, catch up with one another chat uh, worship together we're then going to watch the live um, care for family event and then we're going to have some time of ministry as well so really encourage you to come along to that we need to know numbers so please sign up um, either by contacting the church office or sign up at the um, get connected desk um, we're going to invite donations on the evening Got that? Okay, Hannah is waving the sign up. Lots of people signed up already, but if you'd like to go, please, uh, after our time together today, sign up and come along. It's going to be a great evening. So that's the first thing I need to mention. Secondly, next, next Saturday at 4 p.m., we're going to have a barbecue down at Mainporth Beach. It'd be great if you're coming just to let us know. So there's a sign-up sheet at the back for that, just so I know how many sausages and burgers and veggie burgers and the like to buy. So if you're able to uh, come along, we're just going to have some fun. Just hang out, and there's going to be games for the children and young people and for everyone else if they want to get involved. So uh, next Sunday, the Saturday, sorry, at 4, um, 4 p.m. If you need a lift, let the office know. Let Sally know or Susie know in the office, and we'll make sure that we sort something out. Okay. Next Sunday, baptisms. Woohoo! <laughs> so we've got two people being baptized. We're excited. Say that again. Why are you shouting out, Tony? <laughs> Say that again. Why don't we do them on Saturday? <laughs> um, because we're doing them on Sunday. <laughs> because we didn't think of that. <laughs> um, okay, so, so baptisms next Sunday. <laughs> and then. Um, on the 22nd, not because the women are having their evening, but we thought for another reason, which I'll explain on night, we're having a bloke's curry night. So if you want to come along, we're going to have some curry. Um, 22nd, 7 o'clock, sign-up sheet at the back. It'd be great if you can make along. I think we've got a good crowd signed up already. 
Um, again, we need to know numbers, so I need to know how much hurry to sort out and everything. So, and then, John, you're going to come up and just talk about small groups. As John comes, small groups are a really important part of the life of our church. There are a number of different small groups, and we want this whole aspect of our life to grow. So a um, number of different groups taking place at different points in the week, and Sally and John are going to start up a new one starting soon. So, John, over to you. Hi, yeah, and just to clarify, deep rooted isn't about eating vegetables that grow in the soil, okay? <laughs> I just wanted to clarify that because I. Get some food in there, Don. Yeah, get some food in there somewhere. Uh, okay, so Sally and I are starting a, a session in. Uh, we're going to do a couple of trials beforehand, but the 14th and 28th of July, Thursday night at our uh, home, um, 7.30 to 9. So no excuses, it's going to be late because I'm very prompt. Uh, I don't like starting late and I don't like finishing late. So uh, that's our aim, 7.30 to 9. If God shows up and you're, you can't move, well, that's all right. We'll let you stay there on the floor. But that's not the aim, okay? So, um, well, it is the aim for God to show up. <laughs> don't, get, yeah. don't get me confused yeah. there. Goodness <laughs> me. Selling, John, selling. Yeah, <laughs> so um, in the autumn, I hope to look at two uh, things specifically. And this uh, was a challenge because I... I I felt this and then I thought, no, no, no. And then my Bible reading kept coming up, fear of the Lord, for days on end. And I, th and I thought, oh, wow, I've got to do this. And then I thought, well, is, I, Lord, are you really saying that? And then we came, was it last week or two weeks ago? Two weeks ago and uh, um, I was really, Sal and I would agree that this is what we've got to do. And then uh, the pastor said, fear of the Lord. And I thought, well, we've got to do it now. And the other one we're going to look at in the autumn. So if you want to read this uh, beforehand, you, you care to catch up, is good or God. John Bevere teaching, uh, whether or not you've heard of him, but a uh, very good book. So we'll be looking at both of them. But it's not about us telling you what you've got to believe. It's about us all discovering what the Bible says and how to live it out in our lives. Because the last things Jesus said was, go and make disciples of all nations, Matthew 28. And we're good at going to church, but we're not always good at making disciples. Would you agree with that? You probably wouldn't. You probably think we're brilliant at it, but no. So uh, join a group. If you want to come to ours, it'd be great. Uh, there are some little leaflets there. If you want to let us know, that would be great. But if not, turn up. Thank you. Speak to John or Sally if you want to know where they live. Did you say that? Sorry, I was... No, no. Anyway. <laughs> Penstrays. Is that right? Or Penstra Penstrazi? Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Right. So, that's it. We're going to do things a little bit differently today, and this was a last-minute thing. We're just going to sing one song together. The children are going to go to their groups, and then I'm going to preach, and then we're going to worship out of what I'm going to be preaching about today, if that's okay. Is that all right with everyone? Can't say no, because... Uh... <laughs> Shall we stand and we'll just commit our time together? Lord. Thank you, Lord, that uh, you have done everything, everything that is required for us to come into your presence. For us to know you as Lord and Savior, for us to be saved. Set apart. Thank you, Lord, that we're seated with you in those heavenly places. Far above any ruler or authority or power in this world that would seek to hold us back and hinder or hurt us. So Lord, our hearts are full of praise to you today. We love you, Jesus. Thank you that we can gather in this place, friends from around the country. Thank you for those joining us online. Some, no doubt, from different parts of the world, Lord, but we are together. We are one, one in spirit, Lord. We are just so grateful for a sense of family. So be with us now, we pray. Lead us and guide us. Help us. We need you today. In Jesus' name. Amen.
take your seats. We will. We will be worshipping again. <laughs> In fact, we're not going to stop worshipping. Um, so if, I don't know if the children and young people want to head off to their groups, they can. Um, I've got the sun in my eyes there. We're going to look for a few minutes this morning at these different offerings from the Old Testament. James kicked us off a little while ago. He talked about the fellowship offering. We've touched on the burnt offering. Remember last a couple of weeks ago when, when I talked about the fear of the Lord, we talked about the altar on which the offering was brought. And um, today I want to talk about the grain offering from Leviticus 2. Verses 1 to 3. So if you would like to turn, you can. If not, it will be on the screen. I'm going to wait for the children to head off. Have a great time, guys. All right. <laughs> Let me pray. Lord, we prepare our hearts to hear from you. And as the children go to their groups, Lord, we pray, would you prepare their hearts? Thank you that they're running to get there, running, because they want to be together and hear from you. Lord, that enthusiasm and excitement for you, for your word. Lord, may we encounter and experience and know that ourselves today. So bless them now. Bless the team as they go. And bless us as we open your word together. In Jesus' name, amen. Have fun, guys. So Leviticus 2, verses 1 to 3. When anyone brings a grain offering to the Lord, their offering is to be of the finest flour. They are to pour olive oil on it, put incense on it. And take it to the Atu Aaron's sons, the priests. A priest shall take a handful of the flour and oil together with all the incense and burn it as a memorial portion on the altar. A food offering, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. The rest of the grain offering belongs to Aaron and his sons. It is a most holy part of the food offering presented to the Lord. Could read on in chapter two and there'll be a bit more detail of how this is brought so i'm going to say this right at the start i'm going to talk about giving today <laughs> okay and uh, i knew we'd set this up yonks ago and i didn't hadn't really stopped to think about the grain offering so it's just i believe in god's plan but my heart always sinks a little bit when it comes to talking about giving used to okay and your hearts might sink a little bit but you know it's like because I don't want to reinforce that kind of stereotype people view that people, some people have about the church. Oh, they, they just want our money. They're, all, they're always talking about money. Well, the reality is, is that I don't think we've talked about giving from this place in a sermon for about four years. Doesn't, we don't, doesn't mean we don't think it's important. We will talk about it every week, the importance of this. But this is what I believe the Lord has given me to speak about today. And I think it's highly important because it's about our discipleship. It's about our growth in Christ, and it's about the extending of the kingdom. And I think it's really important that we don't overlook it, because it is such a place of blessing. So let's go to this book of Leviticus. My heart sinks when I say that sometimes. <laughs> um, so in Leviticus chapter 2, these, these first couple of verses... Uh, chapters are, are, are looking at these different offerings. So we're going to look at the grain offering. That's worth mentioning that these offerings are part of the old way of doing things. They were part of the law which Christ fulfilled, and its requirements are no longer something that we need to be that need to be observed. <laughs> yeah, but these laws are a shadow. They're kind of almost they're, they're pointing towards Christ. So they do warrant us looking at them and saying, OK, what is there for us to glean and what is there for us to learn from these parts of the Old Testament? And that's what I hope we'll see today. I hope that we will see as we look at this today. 
that this, this offering in the Old Testament is actually about our offering of worship today. It's a part of our devotion to God, to Christ today. And I want us to see that how our financial giving, we could talk about giving in all sorts of different ways, but I am actually focusing on money today. I'm talking about finance. And, but I want, this is part of our worship. It's part of our devotion to Christ. So just a few points from this second chapter of Leviticus. So although the grain offering was totally voluntary, that's, that's the important aspect of the grain offering. It was needed and it was necessary. If you want to put that next slide on. I'm giving away each of my points. <sighs> Try and work it out. So we go. <laughs> when a person brought a gain or grain offering to the priest, a small portion of it would be offered to God on the altar with some frankincense, a sense of it burnt, and there would be this aroma that would rise so the offering was sweet smelling. That's a nice picture, isn't it? The rest of the grain was an offering went to the priests to sustain them and the temple. The priests were not like the rest of the people there. They were set apart with a particular task. They, they couldn't work or they couldn't work the land as everyone else did so that they were able to provide for themselves. They were given to running, overseeing, supporting the work of the temple. They were reliant on these offerings, and particularly the grain offerings, so that the work of the temple could be maintained. We see in Nehemiah what happens when the offerings stop, when the gifts stop being brought. Nehemiah and Ezra before him had been given the job of leading the people back from, or coming back from exile, then leading the people to the rebuilding of the temple and the walls and the establishing of godly rule, godly kind of civic leadership um, within Jerusalem. They got back to find a pile of rubble and they got building. We read about this, don't we, in, in Ezra and Nehemiah. They did really well. But then what happened was is Nehemiah had to go back to Babylon. And he was away for 14 years. He got everything set up, everything running, everything in place. Then he goes back to Babylon, 14 years. And then he comes back and he's walking into the, into the city. And there's something wrong. There's something wrong. There's no worship. There's no intercessory prayer. It stopped. And this is what it says. There's a number of things that were wrong about that time. That's a sermon for another time. But this is what it says in Nehemiah 13.10. I also learned that the portions assigned to the Levites had not been given to them and that all the Levites and musicians responsible for the service had gone back to their own fields. The giving stopped and the worship stopped. The people stopped giving and the worshipping, praying in the midst of that community ceased. And I believe when that happens, this community suffers for it because of it. It was during our last um, baptismal service a few months ago when a, a whole, whole number of folks were baptised. It was great, wasn't it? Wasn't it good? And I just touched on it during my, my sermon. I, I read this, and actually, as I was, while I was preaching, this thought came to my mind. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. And see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Bring the whole tithe into the, to the barn. I was struck by the way we saw the floodgates of heaven being opened before us. Yeah? There's these five people from such different places and walks of life professed and declared their love for Christ. It's exciting, wasn't it, Beth? And Lisa, she's there. I miss everyone, miss anyone out. <laughs> anyway, I was struck by this. I know it's a work of the Spirit, don't get me wrong. I know this is a work of the Spirit. But I also think it's part of the church being released and aligning ourselves with what God is doing and making ourselves available for this by, by, by releasing people to lead, encourage, um, 
help us in our worship, our prayer, our ministry, our outreach to this community, yes? And it comes, and it's part of, I think, the fulfillment of that floodgates being open as the whole tithe is put into the barn. Does that, does that make sense? As we do what God calls us to do because of the, the, God, the money that God brings into this place, we are seeing the floodgates of heaven open. So it's necessary and it's needed. I think that's pretty straightforward. Yeah, you with me? We're tired this morning. <laughs> it's the sun. So secondly then, from this, from this passage, from, from Leviticus, secondly, it's flexible and it is freely given. It is flexible and it's freely given. A grain offering would have been most likely been one of the one of wheat or barley, depending on what was available. And whilst other sacrifices had quite specific instructions attached to them, the rules governing the grain offerings were, were few. A grain offering could be given to God, either uncooked or cooked in an oven or pan. The requirements for the grain offering were that it had to be finely ground flour. Remember, that's important. It had finely ground flour and have oil and salt with it. The only stipulation was... I had no yeast and no honey. Yeast pointed to sin and, and, and how that could just pervade through the batch like yeast does. And honey is an interesting one. When you cook honey, what happens to it? It smells horrible, apparently. And this was supposed to be a pleasing aroma to the Lord. So I had frankincense on it. It was a quality, expensive spice that would just fill the temple with the aroma of the offering being brought. Gave no specific amount of grain that was required. So it wasn't specific on that. People were to give freely from what they had. Now I've been, I say I, should say we, have been putting together our new welcome packs. And uh, I think they're brilliant. And thank you to everyone who's been working quite hard to put these together. And Hannah and I were talking about one of the inserts that we were getting ready for this on giving. And uh, I'd put that passage about from Malachi about bring the whole tithe into the bond. And we had this conversation about whether we should be talking about tithing as a principle that we want to sort of put out there as a church. A tithe is when you give a tenth of your income as, as, as an offering. Now, we did include it, and I'm not going to make this a sermon about tithing. You listen to some sermons and read some books, and they'll say, yes, tithing is for today. Tithing is part of the newest new setup, the new, the new covenant, if you like. And some will argue, argue equally as kind of passionately that it was for the Old Testament. I think what we have in these few little verses from Leviticus is a helpful guide about how we come to giving. Firstly, it says this, it's got to be given out of a person's free will as an act of worship. You can't give because I'm stood up here today talking about giving. It's got to come from here. It's got to be an act of will freely from your heart. So we'll talk a little bit about that later. Not because I'm up here giving my 100% best <laughs> on giving. That's the first thing. It's got to be freely given. But then it says this. Remember I said it's got to be fine flour? It's got to be fine flour. Now, in those days, flour was not fine because it would be gr ground on probably a couple of, couple of rocks or stones. And so they would just get it kind of rough, and that's how they would make their bread. But the, the, the stipulation for the grain offering is that it needed to be fine flour. Do you know how you got fine flour? You worked really hard <laughs> and worked it 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 and kept working it until your arms ached. So it felt costly. It felt really costly. 
So I think that there are two things from this that we can take about this, this, this gift and, and, and the way we bring our gifts is, is that it needs to be free will. It needs to be freely given from our hearts. And secondly, it needs to be kind of costly. There needs to be a sacrifice attached to it. The offering you read on in chapter two was called a first fruits offering. It was given first, not after everyone else had had their bit. It was given first, and then you work the other stuff out. So how do you feed that into this conversation about tithing? Well, I don't think it's a, this is about a specific amount. It's about the heart with which it was given as I've said, and it needs to be sacrificially given. Now, for some people, that will be tithing. Some people, that will be tithing. They'll be sitting down saying, okay, this bit's the Lord's. I know for us as a, as a couple, really early on in, in our marriage, we said we're going to do this. We're going to do this. And that was the best decision that we made. Because actually, when you start doing it a little bit later on, it can be a little bit more difficult. But we started from the beginning we said okay this is what we're going to do and we made that a principle and we've sought to live by it even through the really difficult times when we were we were in training to be a pastor and <laughs> but anyway but it's a great place to get to because then we've never gone below it but we can go above it and sometimes the challenge comes and we've had the absolute delight to say okay we're going to double tithe we're going to we're going to Go for it, you know, and we've had the privilege of doing that. So we set that. I'm not saying that because I want you to look at me and say, well, you know, I'm just saying as a principle, tithing has worked for us. And we have sought to live by it. And it's, it's been a it's been a helpful thing for us. But then sometimes for some people, tithing won't be enough. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm almost like we don't make it a, a set principle, because for some people, they won't even notice a tithe, a tenth. They wouldn't even notice it. So there'll be no cost to it. But for some people, a tenth may not be possible. So I, <clears throat> this was a long, long time ago, way before I came here. Somebody from my previous church came to me and said, Matt, we've been preaching about this. We've been talking about money and tithing. She came to me and said, Matt, I've got myself into a real pickle financially and I've got to pay off all these debts. And I am struggling with what you preached on, you know, what's being said and what the expectation is in the church, because I have got 16 pounds a month spare. That is what I am left with, 16 pounds a month. And she said, all I can afford is a pound a week. And I'm like... You know, she was taking that so seriously. And yeah, she could, you know, there was that struggle, mistakes made, no doubt about it. And she put that right. And, I'm, and I, I don't know her now, but, but I just remember that conversation. Do you see what I'm saying? It's got to be fine. It's got to be fine. It's got to cost us something. And it's got to be freely given from our hearts. I am. Um, I love this story. Listen, listen, Jesus tells some great things, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, um, but there's a story, and somebody pointed something out to me in this story recently that I had never noticed before. So, so the story of the, 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 the woman and, and the widow's might, yeah? The widow's coin. And somebody pointed something out to me recently about this, and I'd not seen before. Let me read it to you. Jesus sat down opposite the place where offerings were put and watched a crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor woman came and put two very small copper coins in worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she gave out of her poverty, put in everything 
all she had to live on. I, what I'd never noticed before and what was pointed out to me is she gave two. <laughs> she gave two. She could have given one. Never seen that before. Brings a whole new slant to it, doesn't it? She gave two. This I know, the amount that you, I don't know who gives what here, I really don't know. Ian, Ian knows that. He's the one who manages it. Um, but the amount you give is between you and the Lord. That's, that's the bottom line. It's between you and the Lord. But when you give, give freely and sacrificially as an act of worship. Okay? The final thing I want to say about the grain offering is that it's given out of, in response to what God has done for us. So it's about being forgiven and then giving out of the overflow, if that makes sense. The grain offering would be presented after the burnt offering. The burnt offering was the offering for the forgiveness, for the forgiveness of sin. When that one was taken, the whole thing was burnt up. We'll talk about that another week. The whole thing was burnt up. So they would make a sacrifice for their sin. And then almost in thanksgiving, they would bring their grain offering. And it would just be out of this recognition for their forgiveness, of their forgiveness. Let me read to you this beautiful, beautiful moment in Jesus' life with a woman of questionable background comes and she's overwhelmed in his presence and thankful for what he has done. And she washes his feet with her tears and he dries and she dries them with her hair. And then she cracks this pot of expensive perfume and she puts it on Jesus. And this is what happened. And the Pharisees who asked Jesus to come to his house saw this. He thought to himself, Jesus were a prophet. He would know. That the woman touching him is in a sinner. Wasn't it funny last week when we kicked Barney out of the church? <laughs> Barney was dressed as a Pharisee last week. <laughs> and we said, no, we don't want this in the church. Rob Barney. <laughs> he's not here this week, is he? <laughs> it's all right. He's, on, he's away with the family. But we kicked him out of the church because we don't want that religious, pharisaical spirit having any influence or impact in the life of our church. Yes. That, that's what it happens. That's what happens. That is the pharisaical spirit that we've just read there. Jesus said to Pharisee, Simon, I have something to say to you. Simon said, teacher, tell me. Jesus said, two people owed money to the same banker. One owned 500 coins and the other owned 50, owed 50. They had no money to pay what they owned, owed. But the banker told the, the both of them that they did not have to pay him. Which person will love the banker more. Simon the Pharisee answered, I think it would be the one who owed him the most money. Jesus said to Simon, you're right. And Jesus turned towards the woman and said to Simon, love that, he turned to the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? When I came into your house, you gave me no water for my feet, but she washed my feet with her tears and she dried them with her hair. You gave me no kiss of greeting, but she has been kissing my feet since I came in. You did not put oil on my head, but she puts perfume on my feet. And it says this, I tell you that many, that her many sins are forgiven. So she showed great love. It's just amazing, isn't it? tell you that her many sins are forgiven so she showed great love what a beautiful act of worship coming from the overflow of gratitude for what christ has done that's what this is about you want to take away from today that's it it's an overflow it's an overflow in response to what christ has done let me finish by saying this. Christ doesn't want your money. He doesn't want your money. He wants your hearts. 
Because when you give him your heart fully, what's the phrase? Wholeheartedly, <laughs> what happens? Everything flows from that. What we give, what we say, what we do, who we are, it all flows from that. That's what matters. Get that. And all the other stuff will fall into place. So that's it. I don't think it'll be another four years before I talk about giving again. I'm talking about it because it's important. Yes, it's important because I want to see what's happening here, growing and flourishing and developing. But I'm kind of not talking about it because of that. I'm talking about it because I think it's such an important part of our growth and development as, as Christians. And Jesus says quite a lot about the place of money in our lives. So I want us to just focus for a few minutes as we worship together on giving our hearts to him. And that's what we're going to do. We're just going to worship together. And we're just going to give our hearts. We're going to lay them before him. Do you remember we talked about the altar the other day? The altar of our hearts. And we talked about how, how do we do How do we bring our hearts before God as an altar? Well, it starts with, with, with repentance. Turning away from the things that we know to be wrong. It goes on to talk about the fear of the Lord, taking his word seriously, revering him and putting him in his rightful place. And then it's about saying sacrifice. And we're willing to count the cost. We're willing to count the cost. And when we, when we do that, our hearts become these altars. I think they become more wholeheartedly for him. And then we start to live from that place. So that's it. That's all I'm going to say today. Mark, you're going to come and worship. I'm going to show us a little clip. I wasn't planning on doing this, um, but it came on my, as I was worshipping this morning and here and praying for our time together, um, this came on and it's included in one of the songs I was listening to. But I want to play it to, to you just as a way of focusing on Jesus and bringing your heart to him today. So um, the guys are going to lead us in worship. After we've listened to this. Let's do it. Should we stand and praise and worship? So 
the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. See if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven. Wow. Jesus, God. Just invite you, Lord, to come and just minister to our hearts now as we're ministering to you in worship. I've been talking lots recently about the sort of the atmosphere, the conditions right for your spirit to move. And, and we believe that this generosity of spirit is one that you love to see in your people. Thank you that we saw that generous outpouring last week. And we know, we know that it's here. But Lord, we pray, just come and minister to our hearts now. Make us, make us, Lord, a generous people. Because we know, we know, that just attracts your spirit. It's like a, a, a gateway an opening for your spirit to be poured out. So I pray for all of us that this would be this, that this would be just part of who we are. We're children of God. We're generous with what's been poured into us. So we say, come Holy Spirit now. Come Holy Spirit. want to be a people living in and out of the overflow of all that you've poured into us. We want to be a blessing to this world around us. Let's be honest, this world that's been just taken over by a spirit of selfishness and self-preservation. We want to walk in and act in the counter spirit generosity in all that we have not just our finance but all that we have come Holy Spirit show us Lord minister to us now let's just wait on the Lord for a moment let's just give our hearts to him now and if you're, if you're wrestling with this you're wrestling with this just bring your heart to him do that thing that I said earlier about bring repentance just turning away Acknowledge that his word is true and is good and right and revere that word and just say I'm willing to, to walk in sacrifice here. So just focus on the Lord for a moment. Just, just invite the Holy Spirit to come and minister to you. He may want to talk to you about ways in which he wants you to be generous. Again, with all of who you are, not just finance. This atmosphere of kind of open the Lord is here and wants to speak to us
Ask you to do something really weird. Get your phones out your pocket if you've got a phone. Can we just have that chorus back up? Go to your camera. Take a picture of it. Take a picture of it. Keep it. 
And as you think and reflect on what God has been saying to you today, as you question him about how you should respond, just keep those words before you. Keep them in your heart. If you come into a time of struggle in the days ahead, any fears or worries, just, just read that. And remember, all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. And he will not stop being good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes? Yes. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, everyone. Guys, thank you for serving us so beautifully this morning. You've been absolutely great. And the guys at the back as well, just serving us quietly in the background. Bless you all. Don't forget to sign up if you're coming to the beach. And if you want a sausage, you've got to sign up or you will not get one. Well, I'm sure there'll be extra, so don't worry about that. So beach at four next week and then other bits to sign up for. Bless you all. Have a great week and we'll see you, see you soon. Mm-hmm.